Right, shut up. Okay, sorry, I just wanted to get your attention for the start of the video. Anyway, welcome back everyone to the Farming Simulator series, a happy little series where we talk about happy little things. Today's happy little topic is the topic of controversial um, topics. <laughs> I guess it's basically just talking about things that are controversial. Now, similar to the um, Theologians I Like video, which I think I called like Theologians I Like, volume one or something like that this could become an ongoing sort of mini series within the main series i'm messing this up badly um just you're talking about different controversial issues a number of different controversial issues per video by the way for anybody who's new here welcome this is the farming simulator series where we uh play farming simulator while talking theology essentially um the commentary on the game is De dependent on the video to be honest some videos uh, feature an awful lot of commentary others feature almost none so <laughs> i don't know what today will bring but yeah so that's the concept of the video so today like i said i wanted to talk to you about the topic of controversial topics in general i want to speak about a few specific controversial topics um but I want to first talk about just general controversy. So controversial topics could be anything from the controversy around, like this is pretty vague, so it could be anything from the controversy around should the um, wine in communion be wine or grape juice uh, to can women be pastors to homosexuality and transsexuality and transgenderism. So obviously there's, you know, there's a lot we could talk about. It'll basically just be me rambling on, like usual, about different topics of importance uh, that are, to some degree, controversial within Christendom. It doesn't have to be controversial in the same way, it's just things that are generally controversial. And, of course, giving my opinion about said topics, because I'm sure what everybody needs to know is my opinion. I am just so smart, after all. I know everything. Um... But yeah, so, I guess the first one I'd like to talk about is, we'll go with the, we'll start off with something light, shall we? What should the communion wine be? Should it be wine, or should it be grape juice? Personally, I believe, and have believed for a while now, that it should be wine. Uh, that was what it always was, that's what it was when Christ instituted it, that's what he told us to do. Um, so yeah, I believe it should absolutely be wine. However, there's a lot of people who believe that wine, that grape juice is completely invalid for the uh, communion. I don't necessarily believe that. Like I said, I wish it was wine. It would be better as wine. But I don't necessarily believe that um, grape juice is uh, necessarily improper, if you will. I, I, I still believe it counts. It's still, you know, juice from the vine. Um, it's basically wine without the alcohol. So if what you're using is, like I say, basically just the wine without the alcohol, I think that's still fine. Because there are, there are a few good reasons, like we live in a world today that's just so extremely and almost comically depraved. Um, so there are a lot of problems that people suffer with. For example, alcoholism is a very big issue that a lot of people suffer with in the modern day. And for some people, just the smell of wine, so I've been told, is enough to pretty much send them over the edge. We don't want to do that. Speaking of things we don't want to do, I'm not bothering with the front mower anymore. It's just it's just making a mess and it's making things harder. So it'll be a bit slower without it, but overall I think we'll, we'll do fine. Um, so I believe that grape juice can be used, um, but I think it should be wine. I think that's what God has instituted. And... I believe in his sovereignty, he will watch over the churches as they administer the sacraments. So that 
um, there isn't any great problems from using wine. But maybe you come from a church where there has been problems with wine, you know, where um, grape juice is really the only viable option for a number of reasons. If that's the case, then fair enough. So yeah, I'm not against the use of wine. I do think it should be, or sorry, I'm not against the use of grape juice. I think it should be wine, but look, my church uses grape juice and I'm fine with it, so. Yeah. Um, but if it's a case of you're just not taking it seriously and that's why you're using grape juice, you're like, ah, it doesn't really matter, who cares? Well, then that's a really big problem. Um, that's the sort of nonsense that leads to people having, like, crisps and, like, Doritos and um, Mountain Dew sort of for um, their communion rather than the, the actual elements that's not proper that's not proper at all so I believe that so long as you're taking it seriously and your decision comes from being seriously considered I believe that's fair enough but it should be wine right, so I think that was a fairly simple fairly easy little controversy we spoke about Let's move on to something slightly less easy, transgenderism. Now, transgenderism in the modern day is basically the new religion. Well, I suppose wokeism is really the new religion. Transgenderism is just one of the um, necessary parts of that religion. Now, when it comes to my personal opinions about transgenderism, I don't believe in it. I don't, you know, if you're a man and you chop your ghoulies off, you're still a man. Well, you're still a fella. You're still a male. <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily call you a man at that point, but you're definitely still a male, biologically. So, you know, I, I don't think that's how it works. I think uh, God created man and woman. And that's the way he intended to create it. And it's not up to man or woman to come into God's creation and say, it's good. But it could be better. That's that's not how that works. So I need to how do I get this out? There we go. Um so yeah, I, I don't believe in it, but personally I'm of the opinion people have the right to do what they will with their own bodies. It's their life and therefore they have the right to mess it up as much as they like. But we need to be very heavily discouraging these people. Like if you want to chop your arm off and call yourself a stool, go for it, right? But, um, well, not go for it, I'd say. I I won't force you not to do that, but I would heavily dissuade and discourage you for your own sake. Because I don't want you to do something stupid that could ruin your life. But at the end of the day, the choice is up to you. But that's only if you're an adult. The idea of children being transitioned, it's disgusting. And anybody who does that to a child that has, ought, ought to be buried under the prison. It's, it's absolutely repulsive and vile and disgusting. And it's not the result of the child wanting that. Or if it is, the child has been conditioned to want that. But no child, by their own accord, by their own free will, wants that sort of nonsense to happen to them no child wants that it's evil it's vile it's repulsive uh, and anyone who believes in by the way in transitioning children immediately you have no I, I don't respect you there is nothing to respect you are the lowest form of person almost as bad as the french so maybe i shouldn't joke at a time like this but it's you know gotta keep the video light somehow so I think, you know, look, transitioning yourself as an adult, I would heavily discourage you from it, but it's your life, ruin it if you want. You don't get to do it to children. Children are off the table. It's not happening. Um, and the amount of people who push for it, by the way, is flipping mental. I'm not sure if I can say fake. Ah, well, why not? It's faking mental. Um, I think a lot of people only push for it because even in their heart of hearts, if they have a heart, they know it's wrong 
but they also know that wokeism is the new religion and they don't want to be a heretic in the religion of wokeism so they go along with it even though in their heart of hearts they know it's evil and wrong and vile they go along with it because they don't want to be seen as repressive or regressive they don't want to be seen as a far right bigot fascist or whatever um, even though to believe that children shouldn't be forced to be mutilated is, I don't think, a far-right fascist or whatever thing to say. <laughs> but that's the way a lot of people see it. So I think there's a lot of support for this, not from people who believe it's right, but from people who believe they will get in trouble if they stand out against it. I think most people who currently believe in it, or currently claim to believe in it, if given the opportunity away from public pressure, from public society, from the culture we currently live in, if got, gone on by themselves to their own thoughts, to be, able to, to be allowed to think for themselves, if they were to sit down and think, am I actually for this? Most of them would say no. And the ones who would say yes would be the evil and the monstrous uh, people in society. And society always has people like that, unfortunately. But now they're at the helm and they're driving everything. So yeah, transgenderism, I don't believe in it. If an adult wants to go through with it, I discourage it. But look at ruin your own life. Just don't ruin mine. Um, there's always detransitioning, which is, by the way, um, never as easy as people might make it seem. It's like, oh, well, if you, you, know, if you go for it and if it doesn't work out, you can always change back. Eh, well, no. People who change back have their bloody lives ruined pretty much and, and not to mention the fact that they are looked down upon as like scum by the transgender community in general like there's people who have horror stories of you know they're in these communities that support them and say yes you you need to live your truth and your life and your valid and blah 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 and then the second they say well maybe i'm not actually transgender that goes and they're like no screw you how dare you that sort of thing so I mean, it's not a surprise that they're not a loving community. So devoid of God, who is love. It's not a surprise that they're not loving. Um, but yeah, so... Even if you're far gone, and even if you are a tranny, there's still the forgiveness of Christ. You're never too far gone to be forgiven by God. And that's the plea I make to anybody who's on the wrong side of these issues, is... No Christ. Come to know Christ, get to know him, repent of your sins and believe in him, he is our only hope. And that goes for anyone, no matter the evil and vile things you have done. Even people who have transitioned their children, evil and disgusting as that act is, they can be forgiven. Speaking of doing evil, vile and disgusting things to children, we might as well talk about abortion. The fact that there are pro-choice people actually boggles my mind. Somehow society has managed to convince itself that the murder of children, the slaughter of the most innocent beings in the universe, is justified. Somehow, some bloody how, murdering a baby is a basic human right. A woman has a basic right to murder a baby, but a baby doesn't have the basic right to be alive. That, like, it, it, it just baffles me. The more I think about it, the more I'm like, how has society got to this point? You can't explain it apart from biblical Christianity. Because biblical Christianity gives the answer. That's sin. That's total depravity. That's the devil doing his thing. That's the only way society can get to this point. So the fall, the fall of man caused by Adam and Eve, that's what's brought society to this point. And we are done this field now. I'll, I'll just leave all my stuff in here. I won't bother bringing it back to the thing. But that's what's brought society to this point. And I think even if you're a non-believer watching this video, you have to know that that's the case because, I mean, come on, how else can you possibly hope to explain this this horrible horrible evil what is there just a fur oh 
Why is there just a fertilizer bag there? I don't, I don't know. Okay, there's really no other way to describe this horrific evil. Um, or to explain this horrific evil of abortion and all the horrible things that happen. Without understanding what the Bible teaches about human nature, about human depravity, and so on. That's the only way it can be understood. I thought these were silage missions. Hold on. Tether, tether, okay. I guess not. I'll bring the two of them at the one time. But yeah, the only way these things can be understood is, I think, biblical Christianity. And there may be someone who think, well, abortion isn't evil. And I just think you are mental. You are actually mental. Uh, abortion is one of the greatest evils of our day. Don't need to attach that. Um, it's truly one of the vilest, vilest things imaginable. Um, it, it's, it's a heartbreaking evil. It's the murder of children. I mean... I hopefully I don't have to explain my position. Hopefully my position is is obvious. Murdering children is wrong. It's evil. It's vile. It's inexcusable. But not unforgivable. Because Christ can forgive all by his atoning death on the cross. By his blood shed for sinners like you and I. And maybe you're listening to this and you've gotten an abortion. Or maybe you're a supposed doctor, a pretend doctor, I won't call you a real doctor. Maybe you're one of them pretend doctors who gives out abortions. I don't think very highly of you, you can probably tell. But I think very highly of the forgiveness offered to sinners by Christ. A forgiveness that I know I didn't deserve, no one deserves. Forgiveness you don't deserve. But it's not about deserving. It's about the love of Christ. So if you have done this horrible thing, God is angry at your sin. There's all this thing about God's not angry at your sin. Yes, he is. He's furious. He is so angry at your sin. But he's so kind. I mean, in our anger, what do we do? We lash out. God is kind in his anger. He offers forgiveness. But he also threatens justice. And justice is a threat to sinners like you and I. So again, if you would repent of your sins, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and him alone for your salvation, for your forgiveness. You can be forgiven of what you've done. Why isn't this working? It's not doing anything. What? It just, it isn't doing any, what the? Huh? I don't know why, it, do... I'm so confused. I may have to rent a tether. Ah, uh, goodness sake. Well, everything on right. Seem to. It's just not working. Great, okay. <laughs> Fine, why not? Why not, eh? You know, I could be cheeky and what I could do is just rake these up, bail it and sell the bales for myself. Now I'm gonna rent another tether. That's really annoying, hold on. No, not a tether. Wind no yeah, a tether. Uh might as well get this one. How much does it cost, Elise? Two grand. 
if this doesn't work now I'm definitely just going to be um, raking this up and selling the bales I'll still make a loss from the field because if you cancel a contract this late into it um, it, it takes money from you so I'm definitely I, I'd still make a loss from the fields but it won't be as bad if I just sell the bales for myself which will be another time where we've just made a loss because the game decided it didn't want to work okay I think the next controversial issue we could talk about would be the issue of women pastors from my answers before you can <laughs> the woman just walked out here and the meter was like nope and went back from my answers before you can probably guess where I fall on this topic and my position is the one of the Bible when Paul said I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man now scripture isn't clear on many things let's be let's be clear about that scripture isn't clear about many things the phrase the scripture is clear about uh, xyz is often overused and misused because scripture is rarely clear um even on the thing even when someone says scripture is clear with and then they name a doctrine i agree with i won't always agree that scripture is clear on it but scripture is very clear on this there is no wiggle room here I do not permit a woman to teach. You cannot get more emphatic, more clear, more direct if you tried. If the rest of the Bible's theology was laid out like this, I mean, that we'd have such an easy time. So the fact that there are a lot of people who see this and are like, well, there's room for debate. It's like, what are you on about? <laughs> but I think most of the egalitarian movement is driven not by... Uh, a love for God, but by a sort of progressivism. A love for being woke, if you will. Now, the um, the egalitarian movement, does this work? Please work, come on. Come on. It doesn't work. I'll just spend two grand on this thing and it doesn't... Hi well, boys, we're going raking. <laughs> okay. So that's going to be fun. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so the egalitarian movement has been around a lot longer than wokeism. Um, but still, in the modern day, most of it is driven by a want to be woke or a want to be progressive or what have you, but not a want to be biblical. Because a want to be biblical will not lead you to false doctrine. At least not most of the time. A pure and true want. Sometimes if you mix a little bit of a want to be biblical in with your own personal beliefs and so on. I think that's how we get false doctrine. So there may be people who believe that they're purely looking for what's biblical. But in reality they're just confirming their own biases or something like that. But uh, a true want to be biblical won't lead you into false doctrine. Um, but this, the idea that women can be preachers is a false doctrine. It's a new doctrine. We don't see that in church history. Uh, we don't see that in the Bible. The Bible very obviously and clearly teaches against that. So, yeah, no, women cannot be pastors. And by the nature of this video, obviously, it's a video on controversial topics. There may well be some people watching me who go, okay, now this guy's a bigot. And I'm like, I'm surprised you didn't say that before. But if you're saying it now, you probably did say it before. But to which I would say, if you think that's bad, you should see all the other stuff I believe. That would make you really hate me. But um, yeah, no, women cannot be pastors. Now, there is the question of is a woman pastor completely invalid or just not proper? My position is that it's completely invalid, but there are some people who would say that it's just not proper, that you can still, you know, it's better to attend a church with a woman pastor that has other good values than maybe uh, you want to be Eva churches with a male pastor. I completely disagree. I would sooner attend Joel Osteen's mega church than I would attend a um, a decent Presbyterian or Baptist or Anglican church that has a woman pastor, because at least at least with Joel Osteen you know full well where you stand. But with um, with those supposed churches, you don't really know where you stand. You don't know what the next compromise will be. You don't know how far they'll slip. 
and how far they'll fall and how far they're willing to go to compromise with the world. At least with Joel Osteen, I know the threat level to a degree, but with um, egalitarianism, you don't know where it ends. It's a slippery slope. So I believe that women pastors are completely invalid for two reasons. Number one, the Bible says that a pastor must be a male. And number two, the Bible says that a pastor must have good theological knowledge. And if you believe in women pastors, you don't have good theological knowledge. You have to believe in women pastors to be a woman pastor. So they fail on at least two counts. People say, well, well, if it's a woman with really good theology, if it's a woman with really good theology, she won't want to be a pastor. So, no, women cannot be pastor on those two counts. They have faulty theology by their egalitarianism, a very poor view, clearly, of church history, of the Bible, and so on. And the Bible just flat out says, no, women cannot be pastors. And that is the way God has created things. I don't know why he did it that way, but I trust him. And that's the thing. We gotta trust God. You gotta know, okay, let we can trust him. And this is something I talked about in a recent message I preached over on the main channel. I don't always know why God does the things he does. In fact I rarely know why God does the things he does. I can't know his motivations. But I can still trust his character. So I might not know why God has done the things he does, why God has set up the things he has, why God has established certain things as sin. But I can know that God is good and just and righteous. So I can trust him to make these decisions. I know he is perfect and a perfect God will not err. He will not get something wrong. So I trust him on this. I don't know why this is the way he set it up. But I know that this is the only way it could have been set up. Because this is the way God deemed for it this is the way god deemed right for it to be set up so this is just something you have to consider with these things is we may not know god's motivation for doing something but we can know that he is good and righteous and just and perfect so we don't have to know his motivation in order to be able to trust him um to allow his uh, infinite wisdom and knowledge to guide us in our lives and that's really what this is all about, these controversial topics we're talking about. That's really what it's about, is allowing God to guide us. He should be our guide. He should be, I mean, he is our father. He should be the one who leads us. And I think that's something that people are forgetting today. They're ignoring the truthfulness of the Bible. They're ignoring the word of God and clinging on to the wisdom of man and that is to a detriment to our society to Christianity to everything and everyone it is detrimental anyway I don't think I'll have time to talk about another one fully and properly so thank you guys for listening to me ramble on and on and on um, I hope you enjoyed this video I always enjoy making them if you have any other topics you'd like me to cover, whether it's a controversial topic or it's um, something else, just a topic in general, please do let me know. I'm always interested to see what you guys uh, want to hear my thoughts on or what you guys might have questions on and so on. Please do let me know. Um, thank you guys for watching. Goodbye and God bless.